I've got Twisted Tamer and RTA Runner Glyph DX from earlier in the week with me. We're going to show off a run of Link's Awakening DX No Wrong Warp. The game is running live on my Game Boy Player right here via the use of GBI Speedrun, Game Boy Interface Speedrun. This is a huge deal for the accessibility of TaskBot on home consoles because we've accelerated Game Boy verification from three to now 29 different games running on the Game Boy Player, and 20 of them can be run and downloaded right now from runs.task.bot for anybody who has Game Boy Interface Speedrun to play at home. We're always happy to help set it up too on Discord at discord.task.bot. But for now, let's start the run and let's take it away. Twisted Tamer, the TAS author, and RT Runner Glyph DX. All right, All so right, we so just... Oh, go for it. <laughs> we just got through the file select pretty quick. This test uses a lot of left press right trick, so it's not going to look like a normal RTA run. Essentially, it gives you a weird directional state that can actually affect how items work. So we use it to our advantage with very glitched behaviors on items. And the first thing we're going to see is when we get to the beach. Won't spoil it. You want to talk about the game, Glyph? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, this is No Wrong Warp. Uh, to explain the rules a little bit, uh, we're not allowed to go into the doghouse and do, um, do any of that uh, glitch world stuff you might be familiar with. Um, that will be in the next run that we just met the incentive for. Um, mm -hmm. Also, uh, uh, the game is kind of built up into maps. Um, just like the overworld map, caves have their own maps, and caves share the same map for the most part. Um, and for the most part, we won't be transitioning between different cave systems unless it loads the correct palette. Uh, so you see there, um, using up plus down, uh, it kind of changes Link's position, so we can um, extend that knockback it gets from the urchin to get the sword quicker. Uh, you can see in the input display that it's it's really um, uh, crazy inputs going on that you wouldn't be able to do normally. Yeah, here we're going to collect 10 rupees using a little duplication trick where we flick the shield at the right frame. It gives you 2 rupees instead of just 1 because it's 2 hitboxes. And we're going to use that to purchase bombs and then steal the bow. But we got to get past this guy who doesn't want to let us win. He is a Sith Lord. He's a <laughs> Sith Lightning on us. And just to show you guys one of the cool things with the way that GBI speedrun works, the inputs are not running off of the controller port here, so I can actually disconnect the controller from the console, and you're going to see the game continuing running. It's pulling the inputs not from a controller, but from the SD card that's plugged into the front memory card port of this GameCube. I was totally expecting a stream to die when you pulled that controller out. <laughs> uh, so you see there, we skipped some of the animation from the owl. By playing, placing a bomb as soon as we transition, it, it it loads two bombs at the same time, which normally is not supposed to happen. And so certain values get overflowed um, where sprites are loaded, and it kind of plays whatever cutscene is on the screen. In that case, it was the text from the owl. So it just played it instantly without having to watch the cutscene. Um, normal RTA, you can only do that with a pit or a screen transition, um, but for a task, using up plus down, we can kind of manipulate um, where the game thinks of Link as being, but, and we can use that to place bombs off screen and just trigger a bomb trigger instantly, just like that. Mm. Yeah. Save and quit is very important in this run. We can warp back to the last place we stored a warp, which was that house, so we can shortcut back to the dungeon shortcut back to the village so that we can go to D1 faster. Certain categories ban save and quit, but we use it as we can here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so like I said, uh, also you can place keys into the side. Um, but like I said, uh, dungeons are kind of sort of on the same map, um, but we aren't allowed to transition between different dungeons, which you can do pretty easily with out of bounds tricks, because um, it loads the wrong palette. It's a little bit too glitchy, and the last test didn't do it. Um, so Tamer opted not to do that, but we'll be doing that. Um, with cave systems, because when you do that, it does load the correct palette. Um, so we'll be doing it um, a little bit later in the run. But dungeons will have to enter in normally through their intended entrances. In okay, this room, we need to kill these two spinies. You basically shield them and flip them over to make them vulnerable, but we just used up plus down to make quick work of them from across the screen. And we used left press right shielding in that underground system to boost over the gaps without the feather. Mm -hmm. Also, you'll yeah, notice... Yeah, normally in uh, GBISR, you can't do up, down, or, or left plus right tricks. 
But in the movie playback system where we're replaying tasses, you can send inputs on the same frame and up, down, and left, right. Right. Also, you might notice whenever we do that, um, Link's glitch, sprite really glitches out sometimes, and that's just a result of the game not really knowing what to do when you hit two directions at the same time. So it, yeah. it just gets very confused. Some more so of that swag technique. That was a super jump. Uh, Want to explain that? Yeah, basically this game has ledges that if you push into it for six frames, you can actually leap off and it'll put you in a collisionless state until you land. But we can actually abuse that by clipping in a wall and then pushing away from it, facing away from it, and it'll put you into a collisionless state until you land. And we can actually do that without clipping in a wall. It's a sub-pixel precise trick at that point. But we can massively abuse getting through any collision we want if it's close enough. And we can use the sealed and sword to deflect off of enemies to redirect where we go. Pretty useful. Very cool. So Twist the Tamer, how long did you work on this task here? I spent months, like learning a game and routing and then it took about three to four months to make the test along with just a little bit of routing and testing here and there mm -hmm. but it's mostly a straightforward process notice we are playing on english um so we can't skip this text with the b button uh so this text goes on forever that reminds me i was gonna tell the story about how i actually got the cartridge to do this verification because it was just like back uh, in February before everything started shutting down. And I got the call that we wanted to do this, like to, to actually like verify this movie. And I tried to track down a cartridge and this isn't just an English cartridge. It's a very specific revision of the English cartridge. So I called like 10 game stores, drove like halfway over the state, digging one up and I finally found one, like hidden away in, in one game store an hour away. It was great. Definitely hard to track down the correct game versions with yeah, such an old game. My, to get my um, Japanese 1.0 cart, I had to rely on a little bit of eBay RNG. Yeah. Uh, there is a bomb trigger <laughs> um, to, to kind of just play that cutscene with the, uh, um, the the witch giving us powder without actually having to have the mushroom. The only reason we need powder is because of the D2 entrance puzzle requiring two powder. Other than that, we could completely skip it if there was a way. So here we got a flock clip, basically a text box triggered by something you push into that gives a text box. It will corner boost you into the wall just a little bit, and that's just enough to clip through it. And there we doubled up with RNG manipulation, enough sprites to, un to overload the next screen so that we can get rid of one of the plants blocking away. So we can skip Bow Wow. Yeah, that's something you cannot do RTA. It's, it requires <laughs> way too perfect luck to be able to do it. Um, but Taskbot always has perfect luck because he's Taskbot. Mm -hmm. Super jump there to skip having to get a key for this room. That jump always looks crazy to me. The Hinoxes are usually very, very difficult mini bosses, but not really. <laughs> kind of looks similar to a Hinox warp you might see in LAS. Uh, kind of uses similar mechanics with the Hinox grabbing you. So these guys just need to be off screen, but we can just shoot them off screen and get our bracelet. We haven't talked about it yet, but every time you open like a chest, you can actually skip the text by opening up the save and quit menu. Right. And, and if you open up the, if you need to do a, a, a menu to change equips. Doing that at, at the same frame you open a chest is, is six frames faster, um, so we'll do that when we can. Yeah. And we use that Stalfos to clip into this instrument room. The way this dungeon is laid out, we can just easily get in here. Skip the Bottle Grotto boss. Yeah, again, the dungeons are all kind of in the same map, um, and so if we just know where the specific rooms are, we can kind of clip uh, um, through walls to get to them. And if you guys haven't noticed yet, I'm sure you all have. I'm sure y'all on the stream have noticed. But in the upper left corner, there is an input viewer live. So you can see the inputs 
coming through kind of like you would usually see with Taskbot live at the event on his little nest board. But on GBI, it, we haven't come through the video feed with the game. Yeah, it's so really it's, convenient, there's especially... there's no actual controller input. Yeah, it's really convenient, especially when you're streaming the game. You can just have an input display without needing an adapter or anything like that. Uh, I want to explain this coming up. It's going to be a pretty cool trick. So, in very old runs, you had to do a five-minute or so quest that involved getting golden leaves and bring them to Richard to gain access to this maze. But basically, we can pause the frame you fall into the pit at the very bottom of the screen, and when you get out of the menu, you'll actually be standing like one pixel below the screen border and you'll be able to transition, so we can just get in here really early. Yeah, whenever you transition on a solid tile, um, the game just tries to look for the, the first available tile that's walkable, and it just kind of pushes you onto that tile. And another little abuse of facing up to open these key blocks. I love yeah, this that is part. Key cab this is Key yeah. Cavern without keys. <laughs> I always love that. Okay, we're going to use this Zol to super jump into the second part of the dungeon. Normally you'd go down those stairs and get a underground section, but we can just get into the other part of the dungeon that way. And this is the best item in the game, not going to lie. Up, down, inputs with the boot dashing, we can actually get really weird speed boosts and be able to jump during a speed boost for like crazy optimizations yeah if you saw in uh, my rta run i did a trick called zoomerang where it's a very very specific um set of inputs you can do rta with the boomerang to kind of trick uh, link's momentum um it's it's very similar with up down you can just do that instantly though very powerful and it'll be, be abused extensively all right, so we got an owl on the next screen that wants to slow us down, but we're just going to make him disappear. Basically, we shovel up enough sprites like we did last time, and the owl can't load, so no cutscene. A little bit faster. Only faster in English, I think, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Will this be a good start to get in a couple donations here? I think so. Yeah, no problem. We have, let's see, a $50 donation from Corp Racing. Here's a teeny bit of progress towards our awesome robot overlords. Must support Taz. <laughs> it's kind of interesting in this game, uh, bombs don't do self damage, but bombs from bomb fairies do, and so you can abuse that to get across that pit without needing to go in the underground. On this screen, normally there's a Wallace that blocks the way, and you need to get Marin to sing a song and wake him up, but it would be a little slow to get Marin, so we just dig up enough items to unload him. And Land Moa, he's always loaded, so you can just shoot him instantly and skip his opening text box. There, uh, you can do a super dash using up down. Um, and during the super dash, you can't actually go inside warp tiles for some reason, and so you can use that to just transition to the next screen to get straight into the armos maze. Some of the sprites are messed up a little bit um, by a result of that. It's a little unintended. Just a little just bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, dashing into him with a sword does as much damage as a spin slash, so we just abuse optimal dash in to kill him instantly, or in nice. six hits. One thing we can't skip is certain dungeons with keys, so we have to get them from the source you get them from. Mm -hmm. It's a good time to mention um, another glitch that uh, Twisted Tamer opted not to use is called Super Swimming, where when you're clipped inside the water and you look at a wall and look at it away from a wall that, that has a ledge, you turn off your collision permanently. <laughs> It's an extremely powerful glitch, uh, and he opted not to use that um, in this test. Mm -hmm. And it helps with more fair comparison to a, a different test that had been done previously, I believe. Yeah. 
Yeah, the last one was in 2010. It had not had the LEDX revolution yet, so it just had Swordless Inc. just had to do the best he could. Yeah, some of the early tasks by Tompa and Swordless Link and stuff are really good. Um, but we've had a lot of new glitches since then. <laughs> Okay, we got a puzzle coming up that involves making the horse heads land upright, and it's usually the bane of RTA runs, but we just manip it to be first try. Nice. And walls are optional, once again. Most of the time. This boss usually requires, like, hurting him with five bombs while he's vulnerable, but unfortunately, we can just go right past him using one of these tiles. Super jump and bounce off the tile. I don't think we fight any bosses until the final boss, by the way. Nope, we just kind of breeze by him. Even the final boss, you can you can question whether we actually fight him or not. <laughs> I think it's debatable. I think give time for a donation now or two. Sure. We have $1,000 from Saturn New Hockey saying, Here, approximately one penny for each action Taz performs that I can't. Let's give more Taz, more Zelda. <laughs> and we have $250 from Komodo saying, All hail Tazbot, our robot overlord. Thank you so, so much, he, guys. Uh, here, Tazbot's going to do what's called uh, Jesus Jumping. Um, it's very similar to Villa Skip, where you open your pause menu and interrupt. Uh, the drowning animation, and you can actually use Feather out of that. Uh, so you can just jump on water, so, hence Jesus jumping. <laughs> I love all the jargon that individual speedrunning and task communities come up with for their, their runs. Uh, so we just got in there without Feather. <laughs> uh, yeah, normally you have to swim through it. Yeah, it, normally sorry. you have to swim through an underwater cave to get there, and that requires swimming, so we can't do swimming. So we just had to do something else. Yeah, by jumping, yeah. Uh, you actually hit the load trigger um, for the for the um, dungeon five. Um, and spoiler alert: we do not get feather or um, uh, flippers at all in this run. <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot more of that. Swimming is also optional. <laughs> yeah, it, not only yeah. super swimming optional, there's swimming entirely. So usually there's a very long route to get to the mountains, but we're going to use getting through cave systems to reach the bird key, and then the seventh dungeon, which is up in the mountains. And now what is there. the menu opening there for? It interrupts drowning so that we can actually stand on the water for a frame. And there we cool, actually, cool. we clipped into the bottom of the screen so we could stand just below the screen and be able to do one of those dash jumps to save a few Jesus jumps. Nice. Yeah. And then transitioning between these different cave systems is allowed under this um, rule set uh, because it loads the correct palette in. This Get is a, a very, little... oh yeah. <laughs> nice visual yep. glitch here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a very, very broken, broken game, as you'll see in the uh, next run that we're going to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this it requires... looks broken. <laughs> yeah, you have you you're ex you you should be excited for what comes up next. Um, but we we need some pretty heavy roll sets in order to make this game not trash, basically. <laughs> Where you just break everything. So this is more interesting. Having to take um, some restrictions. Yeah, normally yeah, you need a, go for it, sorry. And normally need a metal ball to throw at these pillars, and it requires quite a lot of backtracking through the dungeon to get to a spot where you can throw it at the pillars, but bomb triggers will suffice. Now that the third floor is down, we can go straight to it.
And I'm still breathing, the game's still sinking. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> Probably a good time for a donation since we're going to be going to the fourth dungeon next. Sure, we have $30 from Maitri saying, When's Tazbot's bot mitzvah? Shoutouts to the Quake NRC, <laughs> QuakeNet IRC chat. We're still hanging around after all these years. Keep up the good work, GDQ. Wow. That's the IRC chat. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> we still have an IRC bridge for the... Uh, Taskbot Discord. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, just making our way to Dungeon 2. Or Dungeon 4, excuse me. Not sure I said 2. Um, but we had to go um, through the whole... Um... Normally you need to go into Tall Tall Heights to get there. Um, but with some uh, clever super jumps, um, that's not necessary. Yeah, this is normally where you get the flippers, which is why this one's usually done before. If you do the game glitches, but we don't need to swim in this game, so... We just go straight to the instrument. And that was Dungeon 4, and that was, took like, what, 35 seconds? <laughs> it was like 18 seconds Amazing. from entering. 18, nice. that's like half of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy what you can do with the power of stepping through every single frame. Absolutely. What we actually have set up now is the way that we, the way we make these runs is we take BizHawk and we look at the game frame by frame, advance it, and try different inputs until we see what's fastest. And with the Gimbot speedrun core, that's the kind of core we're using to emulate the Game Boy and BizHawk. Uh, we've worked with Casual Poke Player, El Yosha Tass, the Bombs Do, and Enter Penter all together to, and myself, to get that core accurate enough to be able to play these games like LADX and all sorts of other Game Boy games on the like, real console. Mm -hmm. Also, shout out to Casual Poke Player's uh, Tass. Um, where he uh, uh, abuses, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, arbitrary code execution. Save corruption. Yeah, arbitrary. Yeah, and arbitrary code execution and save corruption to beat the game in like one oh two. Yeah, yeah one oh two. And that's it's on insane. the original Link's Awakening, right? I think so, right? Yeah, JP one point oh. Mhm. Mm because arbitrary code execution only works on JP. It's a super, yeah. super cool task. Definitely. This is one of the most complex dungeons to get through casually, but we can pretty much just wall clip and super dash through walls to get almost straight up through it. Yeah, the reason why all eight instruments are required in this run is because the egg requires eight instruments to be able to play the cutscene. Usually you have to play the ocarina with Marin's song, but we'll do something different. But the instruments are still required. Mm -hmm. If you look at a, a, a um, RTA, um, no wrong warp uh, run, it's like 10 minutes or something because you can get to the, the, the egg room. Um, by using some out of bounds stuff, but it's just a little bit too broken and not very interesting for a test. So this this test uh, had to had to make some extra rules to avoid it not being just using super jumps to get out of bounds. <laughs> There's a reason the next one is only about five minutes. We got any other more donations we want to throw out quick before the end of the run? Sure, we have two hundred and fifty dollars from Cancer Bad Zelda Good saying we need to keep the Tazbot block going as long as possible. Let's get that glitch exhibition met and kick Cancer's butt at the same time. We Very have one hundred dollars from Zeta Gundam saying here's my last donation for the marathon. My husband and I have been volunteering from home and it's been a blast. Shout out to the donation crew for being awesome. Now let's keep this Tazbot block hype going. 
Thank you so much, everybody. I love the hype we do with these fast spot runs every year. Probably read one more. Sure, we have $25 from Dr. Robotnik saying, I have a job opening available if Tazbot is interested. Can you do my job? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we are going to go into the egg. Um, notice we did not read the book, um, which is something you don't even do in RTA runs either, um, because if you don't read the book, the pattern is always set to um, left, left, up, right, right, up, left, up. Um, and using super dashes, we can get through it very, very quickly. Okay, we enter a boss room. Usually there's about a 15 second intro where He's just rambling on about, I wanted to end the world, but you didn't want to. But we can just bomb trigger him to not talk and start the boss fight instantly. And interestingly, yeah, Really careful, you... precise use of those bombs, right? Yeah, interestingly enough, if uh, that boss touches the, your sword on uh, in the correct circumstances, he actually can get killed without using powder. Uh, here's Aghanim. Uh, using bomb triggers by placing bombs off screen, uh, you can kind of skip some of the animation that he does. Uh, you also have to push him into the correct spot on the map so that he doesn't have to take time to travel there. It's a little bit faster that way. Also, Link's sprite is glitching everywhere. It's fantastic. Just some up, push down. Just some up, push down messing around. These bats are really precise and annoying, but... All right, so this last boss is Deathel. Usually it takes a lot of arrows to kill, but we bomb triggered the cutscene to end instantly, so no Deathel. There he go. And time is on the white screen fade out. Time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Twist the Tamer and Glyph DX for commentating Twisted's tasks of the No Wrong Warp category for Link's Awakening DX. It's been a great pleasure to show you guys those last two tasks, but we're not done. We have one more. We have the incentive warps tasks coming up next. Thank you very much. Let's go. There's a reason this one took 27 minutes and the next one will take five minutes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for helping us meet the LADX warps incentive for GDQ 2021, AGDQ 2021. What I've got now, first I'm gonna say though, I am so sorry for that mess up with the input display. We always have some sort of technical difficulty when we do a GDQ task about run, and that happened to be the one this time. But we do have runs with input display on uh, VODs and encoded in various places on YouTube to check out later if you would like. But for now, right now, we're gonna throw it live with LADX Warps by Twisted Tamer. And I have again Twisted Tamer and Glyph DX on commentary. All right, so now our hero B is going to beat the game very, very quickly because this game is broken. And this is the reason that uh, we need uh, restrictions in our category or else they all end up looking like this. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. It's going to start the same as No Wrong Warp but it's going to go very differently after a shop. And um, yeah, so it should uh, be very, very differently. Yeah. So in this game, if you enter any sort of um, uh, warp tile from behind, the game gets very confused and it looks at the wrong places in memory. I mean, it sends you to a glitched world, um, a, a version of uh, an already existent map. Um, where all the tiles are glitched and pallets are glitched, everything is glitched. Um, and so one of the places it looks in memory is your piece of power kill count. And the piece of power is an item drop that you get after so many kills. Um, and so what, what map you get and what, what doghouse world you get is based on um, how many enemies you've killed. And by doing a wall clipping glitch we mentioned before, you can actually enter that doghouse world um, from the wrong end, and that's our preferred method of um, 
Wrong warping. Yeah, in this route, we don't need the bow to kill Deathel. We're gonna do something differently. So we just gotta make this quick visit to the shop. He kills us, so we don't get the best ending, which a lot of people argue about. But it's still the fastest way to... <laughs> it, it's, it's worth it for the purposes of speed. Can't be perfect when you're trying to save the world. True. Saving frames, saving the world. <laughs> I think Tazbot knows what he wants. True. Uh, so we do have to kill these two enemies to increment the piece of power kill count to be where we want it. And so this is going to be what we call Doghouse 2 because we've killed two enemies. And you can see and the whole tuck behind, enter behind, and now we have now, a glitched game, map. The game is very unhappy right now. It is not happy with us. Um, but in this really weird world where collision is all screwed up, tiles are all screwed up, enemies are all screwed up, uh, there's the uh, entrance for the egg. There you go. Now we're providing the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> right back to that final boss again. <laughs> hey, we, we just saw this like 10 minutes ago. What happened? But there's a there's a different strategy you have for the final boss fight here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the previous test used an ocarina to stun a bat, which had the same health as the final boss, which was zero, so the final boss would die. But this one, we used bomb triggers to kill the final boss. And because we're limited on how many bombs we have, we have to be conservative about where we use them, only the fastest also, places, like... Also, we get music now. We didn't get music last time, so... Yeah. Easier to entertain it's, now. Yeah, this is this is a banger, by the way. It's sad that we don't get this in runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just again, I am so excited that we had Twisted Tamer live on commentary to talk about this boss fight, because very rare, again, we get to have the task authors actually talking about their run on the GDQ screens. So thank you so much, Twisted Tamer, and thanks, Cliff, for hanging out with us here during this final boss fight again. Absolutely. So yeah, another bomb trigger to just kill the boss instantly, and then we walk the stairs. Timing ends on when the screen fades completely to white. And, and there it is! That's RTA time. time for the warps run. <laughs> that is RTA shorter. time. Uh, in TAS, you also get to master a little bit more text, but that's RTA yeah, time yeah. done. Yeah, TAS timing. We usually end from or start from the power on of the console when you start manipulating things, and then you end on last input. RTA times often have different ways of handling that, but yeah. Thank you again so much, guys. Thank you to everyone who participated in raising the money to help show this any percent warps run of LADX. Thank you again, Twisted Tamer and GlyphDX. Everybody I mentioned, the emulator developers. Uh, thank you to Taters, my project manager for all the GDQ runs, getting everything arranged. And thank you, Dwango, for the wonderful intro. And I think we are going back to Dwango now for a quick outro for the task block. Well, hello everyone. As soon as, uh, not sure when the camera's going to switch over to me, but I'm going to talk now anyway. I am Dwango AC. I have Taskbot right behind me, actually on this side. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about some last things as we finish up the task block for AGDQ 2021. First of all, thank you so much for TyKevin83 who organized the content for this block, as well as everyone else who contributed. Uh, did want to remind you, there is a t-shirt at the Yeti. You can get a Taskbot t-shirt with an isometric view of Taskbot. He's very cute. $5 from every shirt goes directly to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, so be sure to head over grab that t-shirt while you can. We are doing Games Done Classic tomorrow on this stream around 1 p.m. Eastern. Swing on by to hear about the history of Taskbot runs at Games Done Quick Events. I'll be there with TyKevin83 again. Should be a lot of fun. For those in chat, yes, I know. I, I have a COVID beard. <laughs> and a lot of other things. It's It's been a strange time for everyone. <laughs> um, finally, we also have a new version of Taskbot coming out. This version behind me is the last you will probably see of him. Uh, we are replacing the Rob base of Taskbot with something new. Stay tuned for our Taskbot X project. We'll be showing you more about the history of tool-assisted speedrun content at GDQ events. Uh, during what we're calling Taskbot Revisited Runs, where we can dig into some GDQ appearances of Taskbot, get into them, see how these things worked, how the original AGDQ 2014 appearance of Taskbot happened, and all those wonderful things. So be sure to check out 
the sneak preview of that happening tomorrow on this channel during Games Done Classic. That's all. If you would like to be part of the TAS community, maybe you'd like to get your own replay device, head on over to discord.tas.bot. And with that, this concludes the AGDQ 2021 GDQ. Uh, sorry, I said that twice. Uh, TASBOT block. Thank you very much to everyone. <laughs>